How's it going guys? Grip the Bud here for today. Hopefully everybody's having a great week. It's been an amazing ride over everything and um, I wanted to touch upon some of what I call the most undervalued um, projects um, despite everything going on. And for those of you guys who've been following the market, hopefully you have because it's been an amazing ride guys. I can tell you that right now. These last couple of weeks has been astronomically difficult for everyone just because the market has just collapsed on itself in many different directions. But what I do find are some projects that I've been trying to get my hands on for the longest time, but because they're so expensive, I'm finally able to take a look at them um, here. So without further ado, let's talk about the Cardano project. Now I have not reviewed this project specifically on my channel. And uh, one of the reasons why was because with all the hype that that came around a couple of months ago on Cardano, I just decided to say, you know what, and eh, you know, I'll kind of wait and see. And thankfully, I did because Cardano had a massive run uh, late last quarter, and now it's come back down quite a bit. And so today is going to be my official review for Cardano. Uh, full disclaimer: I do own Cardano to a very large extent. I've been buying um, extensively for the last couple of days because I just find it to be extremely um, great project so let's take a look at what Cardano is so Cardano for those of you guys who may not have heard and again there's a lot of people that have already heard about it so it's basically another decentralized public blockchain it's a uh, fully open sourced um, it's developing a smart contract platform that has new and features and improvements from the existing platforms like we know as Ethereum NEO EOS etc this is actually um, a platform that has already built in protocols and has been built from the ground up. So it's not an Ethereum platform. It is not a NEO platform or EOS or any of that. It is its own um, uh, Cardano token, you want to call it, blockchain. This is going to be the first blockchain that's going to be um, developed using what they call a scientific philosophy. So in other words, research-based, evidence-based database, which I find it to be extremely important. This is more about the actual process than the actual product itself. And, and I'm going to talk about that in just a bit because I come from a science background. And so when I see Cardano being um, doing this type of angle, I think it's a very important one. It also has a very large uh, number of engineers and scientific and people with professional experience, something you don't really see a lot in the other projects. And obviously, this is not an ICO, so it's a full on project that went out. A while back and it's in there uh, if you kind of take a look at the website pretty much um, they have a little bit of philosophy the Ouroboros is the stake of algorithm which we'll talk about in a bit the day the daily wallet is going to be where they're gonna be running the applications on the blockchain and then if you go onto the website um, they basically have a couple of, of information um, in there now let's go ahead and jump in quickly to my review and then I'll talk a little bit about what Cardano is and why it's sparking my interest right now Okay, so here we go. So Cardano is, um, in many cases, is considered to be the Ethereum killer or Ripple killer, <laughs> all into one. It's mainly meant to be the, the Ethereum killer. Now, the reason why I say it's, um, it's considered to be the Ripple killer too, it's because it has this new feature called payment processing, which allows people to use the currencies in a way that it's much faster than what you normally would see in an ERC-20 or any sort of other payment systems. Now, I know we've seen a lot of those coming up so far, like for example, Nano, um, EOS is claiming to do that, IOTA is claiming to do that, but Cardano has basically fused these two in together. Now, the only one drawback I see with this is that they've blown up their supply coin, coin count to, in the billions, very similar to Ripple, and that's why I call it the Ripple Killer, because Ripple is basically going to be some something very similar which is going to be that remittance services that you'll find between banks but except that cardano is going to be for the everyday person or institutions as well itself now what is cardano actually so cardano is what are considered to be a third generation blockchain now we've heard this term blur generation before and basically what it comes down to is going to be this idea that we have first generation, which is going to be Bitcoin, second generation Ethereum, which are the smart contracts, and then what you end up having is Cardano being third generation. Third generation, I think, is going to be the primary key 
And so when you're looking at Cardano specifically, you're looking at third generation blockchains. And so Charles Hotskinson was the founder of Ethereum. There's actually eight of them that started um, when they did um, Ethereum. And he didn't really see the project kind of move on to fruition. He left before the actual network was launched. So there was a little bit of disagreements with where Ethereum was running when Charles went in. And it's kind of an interesting story because Charles has had a very different viewpoint of what Ethereum should have been. And some of the problems that we're seeing right now with Ethereum could be attributed to Charles leaving on early um, when the network launched. I think that was kind of interesting that actually happened. So Charles has been a key figure for both the Ethereum Classic community and also for Cardano. And I think that's one of the reasons why it has done so well. One of the things I always look for in projects is if the person that's working on it has had some experience. And I think this is actually something very important. Anyway, so Charles left um, and, and created IOHK, which is Input Output in Hong Kong with Jeremy Wood in 2014. They made money um, with the project by selling Bitcoin when it first um, exploded in price. And so they had a lot of Bitcoin early on and they were able to funnel that into Cardano and into um, Ethereum Classic. The full blockchain engineered, they basically created a, um, a, a programming language from scratch called Haskell. And uh, for those of you guys who are not into the programming languages, someone who creates programming languages from scratch, pretty, pretty damn impressive, actually, if you ask me. And so automatically, it's not working off any of the existing programming languages. And I'm pretty sure that Charles had a reason for doing that. And one of them had to had had the ability for with Haskell languages to provide a lot more security and speed into the actual infrastructure. And so um there's actually a lot of benefits with haskell that you guys can kind of take a look at later anyway uh ioshk also employed philip wattler he was also a designer of haskell so again the three of these guys went ahead and designed um the actual primary language and they created what are called csl cardano settlement layer or csl and basically it, it's a settlement layer that accounts for price it's also part of the proof of stake and it's ready to pretty much prevent uh start on exchanges in june for commerce now, the reason why I bring all this up, guys, is because when you're building a whole entire blockchain from scratch and you are focusing on financial institutions or instruments and you're going to have the exchange ready by June, you're pretty much going to be ready to go. The payment mechanism was built on the actual primary settlement. So what they really are building is a way to settle transactions onto their main chain called the, the, the CSL project. And I think this is actually going to be important because that's going to be the backbone for a lot of these micropayment transactions that occur that are going to be used on the blockchain. And I'm really curious to see how this is going to scale because, again, we're having a lot of problems with Ethereum right now. And I knew I have a feeling that Charles kind of knew this was going to happen. And so this was actually a very interesting story overall with Cardano. Now, let's talk about the key uh, governance system for Cardano and the first one is they have the Cardano's foundation uh, it's basically like all other projects they have they're responsible for promotion development and improvement on the project and they go ahead and provide the necessary resources in doing that you also have Embargo which is a startup incubator that allows new organizations to bring on the blockchain we've already kind of seen this before with for example the NEO ecosystem where they have startup incubations uh, incubators where they allow people to build upon their blockchain that would aid in the development and also in the technical aspect of building these organizations on the blockchain and the last one is IOHK which is Hong, Hong Kong it's a private limited tech firm that's contracted until 2020 so two years from now their contract is going to end and originally it was started again by Jeremy Wood and Charles Hotskins now again if you kind of think about the governance system overall this is very important critical because like all other platforms, you do need to have a relationship with the startup incubators in addition to that and building upon that blockchain using contracts. And so Cardano, Imargo, and IOHK, Im Im Imargo, sorry, I think I have to pronounce that incorrectly, have all kind of worked together in trying to build, make Cardano one of the premier blockchains. All right, let's talk about the technology real quick. So they designed what are called the Arabars. <laughs> These names are actually really hard to pronounce, but uh, let me kind of go ahead and move along here. So the proof of stake, it's a proof of stake mining algorithm that doesn't really use a lot of energy for competition. So unlike, for example, Bitcoin or Ethereum that use proof of work and proof of stake slash proof of work respectively, um, this one has already been designed to actually create one where the algorithm actually, every, there's, there is no such thing as mining in here, 
but basically they select a random node and someone gets some sort of reward um, at the end of that randomization and this actually saves a lot of the problem with the hash rates and also dealing with a lot of the energy consumption that is required in, in Ethereum and Bitcoin. Now, this is what I actually really like about this one. They do peer review academic research without electronic consumption, meaning that for every single of the projects that are coming out, they always do a peer review for it. So it's very similar to like uh, when you go to a university and you're reading these scientific journals, you always have to have this peer reviewed for security, for, um, for any sort of features that could be potentially jeopardizing the entire blockchain. And I do think that this is actually an important one. It's a slow process, though. I can tell you that because you have to go through multiple layers of verification. However, when you peer review the academic research, you make sure it stands the test of time. The other one is that it will also support smart contracts and other blockchain features that are found in both Ethereum and Bitcoin. And they already have a wallet out called the Daddyless um, wallet that can pretty much integrate very nicely with the staking mechanism. Now, I I'm going to kind of venture off here a little bit and talk a little bit about how academic research works. So normally what ends up happening is when you're doing some sort of academic research specifically, in, in, even in tech, you always want to have organizations that can verify the data that's coming out. And this can actually prevent a lot of problems down the road versus companies who try to seal off and close that tech out from other people. Because when you do that, then you open yourself up for bugs. And I like to think of the example like Microsoft versus Linux, right? Every single time a company goes uh, public and they uses the, the open source platform, they always have to verify it. Now, the difference here with Cardano is that it's not using the open source from Ethereum or from Bitcoin. What it's doing is that it's developing its own open source and allowing peer reviews on that. That to me is a huge improvement because although I am, I do like Ethereum to some extent and also definitely Bitcoin, I do think the tech is there. The problem is the tech has to be always, the new tech always has to be verified before it comes up. As blockchain begins to scale and it begins to get more complex, solving different issues, you do need a different pair of eyes to make sure that the code is working correctly and that whatever you're stating actually works the way it's supposed to. Otherwise, you're going to have a problem like the DAO hack. You're going to have problems um, like, for example, um, SegWit problems later on down the road where they're going to have to go back and patch fix it up and down. All right, so what are some key features of the third generation crypto? Number one is that they have to be scalable. So does Cardano do that? Yes, I put a check mark on that. Cardano is attempting to deal with the microprocessing payment. And right now they've already rolled out their test net um, back in December. And they're going to be rolling out their full exchange by June. So we should be able to see some scalability solutions. But if you read the white paper, which by the way, it's very impressive. Um, I think they've got this one figured out without having to add in additional pieces of code in. Interoperability, check. Um, third generation blockchains, they can basically work with different types of chains. And they also have a sustainability governance system that pretty much is going to incubate these startup companies onto the platform that's going to sustain the project going forward. Again, they're going to have IOHK, the Cardano Foundation, and Emergargo as a part of that whole governance system. And also that growth that needs to take place for these platforms. It also is going to have peer review research that influences the project in, in different directions. Now, again, this is actually a very slow process because Cardano takes a while to get these research in. But once the research kicks in, the project should take off. The second thing is it has high degree of fault tolerance, smart contract platforms, and it also have a security focus. So the focus when Cardano was being built was really about security, smart contracts, and also high degree of fault tolerance. These three things are extremely important because what you want is when you're dealing with this blockchain, you cannot have things that shut down, delay. And I think Cardano has definitely looked into it as their main priority. Now, again, there could be bugs down the road, but I do feel that this is something that needs to be in place for third generation platforms. All right, let's talk about the, some of the pros of Cardano and why I think Cardano is considered to be one of my premier elite projects in the platform industries. Number one is, again, building on that peer review academic research background. I'm going to show you in the site a little bit about some of the white papers and how complex and how deep they are. The creators built a white paper by using five, all the creators who are in Cardano um, that created Cardano have actually authored five peer reviewed scientific papers on blockchains and core tech. This is really important because most people just generally use the existing blockchain. But what Cardano has actually done is that they've actually started to make their own papers scientifically based and then have those peer reviews on specifically blockchain. That's actually a skill that's very, very high in demand right now, but very few people have. 
The other one is decentralized open source. So it's truly decentralized. All the nodes are completely, there's, there's no centralization piece to that. They're driven by results and off the driven scientific approach. And they have a huge, large of programmers and developers and researchers, which I'll talk about in just a bit. Now they did launch their mainnet already in 17 and that's obviously that's already fully functional. So as you can see, there's been already a lot of traction going on. Also, they were updating roadmap in about two days from now. And I think that's going to be, um, again, a great put for the community. And then they're going to be doing their test net launch um, on April 30th, which is the IELAE. Okay. All right. Let's go on to the website and I'm going to showcase a little bit more about their tech and their, and their web paper. Okay. So after looking at the website real quick, you can kind of see that, again, they have all their stuff kind of put together really nicely. Um, if you take a look at the roadmap, which I think it's it's a very long roadmap. So don't get me wrong. This is not something where it's going to be an immediate. And I think that's a very huge differentiator from some of the other projects out there. So it talks a little bit about the Cardano team that uh, consists of well-typed circle runtime verification, predictable network solutions, and ATX. Uh, IHK is a team leader. They have a couple of guiding principles. Um, they have different phases in the roadmap. So the first one is going to be Byron. Byron's called the bootstrap phase where they're making improvements with the code, middleware, debugging, improving the wallet, making integrations with APIs. And then what they're going to do is they're going to move from Byron to Shelly, where now the network's going to be very decentralized. So again, they're working off this kind of like centralized model so far right now because they got to iron out a lot of the problems. Once they go to Shelly, that's where all the, the work is going to be. So the next 18 months will be done to inc improve stability, interoperability, and governance system on Shelly using the ARC development. The protocols are going to increase complexity, interdependence, and more exotic cryptography primitives. And so basically the idea here is that once they have ironed out some of the fundamentals, they're going to be moving towards these APIs. Now what they're also going to be doing is They've increased um, their allocation of resources for two research. One is focusing issues with Ethereum smart contracts and looking at um, the professor, General Rousseau of University of Illinois. The other one's focused on foundational design or ontology of smart contracts and computational models without necessarily involving the cost of Ethereum. So that's really important because right now, as Ethereum's price rises or goes down, it becomes more expensive or cheaper to run these transactions. So what they're trying to do is create it so that it's not necessarily going to be depending upon that token price. Um, once they get down to Shelly's phase, they're gonna be including proposals and they're gonna be voting into a voting system along with making these um, updates and countdowns. So let's take a look at Byron real quick. So Byron is, going to be the first phase bootstrapping piece. Um, as you guys can see, they've already deployed Cardano SL, which is the mainlet in September 29th. So great job with that. They've also, um, they're also reviewing the exchange enhancements and the submissions. So this is actually the basic stuff and Charles is in there. Once I get down to, to Shelly, they're going to be looking at the Q2 or Q3 of 18, where they're going to be updating um, the delegation process are about 75% about how they're going to be um, creating staking pools. So cool, very similar to like um, Lark, Arc and Lisk. They're also going to have multi-signatures for HD wallets, about 35% in there. They're going to have wallets on the back ends. They're going to have um, incentive and fees. They're going to talk about how they're going to be running that protocol. They're already about halfway in. So a lot of these projects, guys, they're already about halfway in. So they look like, it looks like they're on schedule. The quantum resistance signatures support uh, friendly addresses, the networking piece, the voting. I mean, I can go on and on, but pretty much for Shelly, it is an extremely busy year. But pretty much a lot of the wallets and everything is going to be the staking protocols are all going to be um, revealed and updated by the time we enter into the second half of 18. So as you can see, there's a lot of pieces in here. Go in is going to be the, the next one talking about side chains. They're going to have an accounting model. They're going to have virtual machines. I mean, I can go on and on here, but the next update is going to be in one day from now. So what's interesting about this, guys, is that they're going into a very, very long roadmap. Now, yes, it's going to be slow. Yes, it's going to take a while to get Cardano up and running. But so far, it, it, it looks exactly like the way I think it's how programming should be done and also how the scientific approach should be done is that slow and steady wins the race. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is if you take a look at um, the actual white papers um, back on Cardano, you can see that they have a lot, a lot of, of, of work here in there. That's actually, let me see, I can download this. 
um, that you can kind of see that Cardano has definitely taken the hit for. So before I move on to the white papers here real quick, when Cardano first came out, it was pretty much like a, a dead dead stick. I mean, it was kind of not doing anything. All of a sudden, it had this massive run along with everything else. And then now it's kind of come back down. But at a $4 billion market cap, at 25 billion tokens, Cardano has definitely come down a lot. In fact, it's actually one of the largest you know coins that got hit. And part of the reason is because of the roadmap. The roadmap is extremely long. It's going to take a while to kind of get this going. But I do think they have a very, very interesting proposition because what Cardano is attempting to do here is fix permanently a lot of the problems that Ethereum has. Now, taking a look at the academic papers, I mean, I think it's quite clear they don't really spend much on the actual marketing. In fact, they spend a lot on actually research-based information. As you can see from here, in terms of the white paper, it is extremely, extremely academic and very similar to what I think it's gonna they're going to be able to pull this off. Okay. All right. Now let's talk a little bit about the charting and then the, the parts. Cardano has faced almost an 80% retracement from the top back, uh, back in January, February. In fact, uh, I think that Cardano right now, um, with the roadmap coming out, with the exchanges coming out in June, with the updates towards the end of the year, I, I do think Cardano is going to be able to pull this off. Now, again, it's a big if and it's a big hail, holy, uh, hail Mary pass. Because if Cardano finds a lot of technical problems, it's got obviously going to delay that roadmap a little far out. But I do think this dirt, ge dirt generation platform is extremely important. And one of the reasons why I say that it's because the market has definitely discounted this as a potential just a flash in the pan. I mean, literally it went up from, uh, I think it's one of the best performers last year. If you actually take a look at the price, it went up almost 2000% just last year alone. And rightfully so, because it had a lot of promises in regards to that. Obviously it's retraced quite a bit. And now we're kind of flatlining here around the 2249 uh, sets. So personally, I'm definitely going to be picking up a lot of Cardano here. I think Although I am a Neo fan and I do love the Neo platform, I think having both bases covered is important. If Cardano does hit it out of the park, it's going to be one of the platforms I think is going to take over Ethereum and potentially be up there in the top top five, uh, just because of the research and the team. And and I think um, there there's actually a, a lot to kind of talk about in regards to the team here. But um, I think it's quite clear. I think it's quite clear who who is in here and you know how they're about doing that so uh in my opinion i think cardano is definitely a keeper i think it's definitely one of those that's definitely going to kill ethereum uh because if this is successful people are not going to want to go to ethereum all right all right guys crypto have a great day crypto